Hi, my name is Adam Hughes and I'm an application engineer with Go Engineer. And today we're going to take a look at how we can use the different selection tools inside of Visualize so that we're grouping and selecting things properly and making edits and that sort of stuff. I think it's really important. And it's very similar to like the F5 key inside of SolidWorks, the, you know, brings up the filter for edges, faces, vertices, bodies, and so on. Um, obviously less complicated because we're not in CAD tools, but, uh, but def definitely something that we need to know. So let's take a look. Okay, so we have this paint sprayer up. We can see all the different uh, the models and all the different components that we have. Essentially responsible for making this whole thing here, right? And what what I want to do now is I want to talk about what these four boxes are here for you, and these four selection tools. This is very similar to like what we have in SolidWorks with F5, right? Where we can see the, the, the filter there. So the first button I'm going to show you here is this uh, appearance button. Now, if I click on any part here, then I can see that I'm presented with what the uh, what color that is, right? Whether it's jet black, I can change the clear code, I can change the color, or right? I can shift it to like whatever I like, and um, and that's that's relatively straightforward. I feel like you know you can click on different colors, they tell you what it is. Google blue, this is anodized red, this is some sort of orange plastic, so on and so forth. So. It's, it's a really good way to snap in between the different colors and textures that you have. What it's not good for is moving things. So a lot of the times people will grab a color and try to move it like they're going to move an object. There is no moving, right? I can't move anything about that. If I select a, you know, something else, I can't physically move that left or right hand side of the panel. It's, it's, it just is what it is. It's stuck there, right? If I wanted to move something, then that's what the selection tool part would do. So I could select on a part now and then kind of move it up and down and around to kind of get it into position or tell my story. So that makes sense. And, that, and why part mode isn't next to appearance mode, I don't know. It's like the next logical thing for me to talk about. But part mode is really straightforward. The other thing you can do with part mode is that you can split things. So you can right click the object that you've selected, go to edit and click split. And you can use this little split window to actually select like a region of, of the model that you want to split into a not into another um, entity, right? So that you can paint it a different color. So if I go to my appearances and I select basic blue, I can now paint that area separate from the other black area. Versus on this other part, if I try to if I try to paint this blue, it's just all blue or no blue, right? Okay. So appearance is good. Part is good. Let's talk about groups. Let's go ahead and undo this a couple times here. Get that back where it belongs. There we go. Control Z is your friend. And let's say that we wanted to have these two objects always behave the same. In other words, if I moved one, the other one moved. Even though these are two separate parts, and of course I can control click these and move them together, but sometimes it's just not that easy. Maybe you have 50 pieces of hardware that you want to group together that just always need to do the exact same thing all the time. So if we select both of those sides and we right click, we can go edit and we can say add to new group. That puts these into a new group, which, you know, if I'm in part mode, I'm still just moving one or the other at a time, right? But now that I've made these into a group and I can put myself into group mode, right? Then if I select that widget, both sides are selected. Thus moving the components together. So groups can be really handy. The last option here is the model. Now, in this case, I only have one model. But if I go ahead and, add, and, go ahead and add a couple more, let's add a cylinder in here. Um, kind of move this around so we can see it. It's a really big cylinder. And I add a screwdriver from SolidWorks, or I, another, I add another sub-assembly, or I add, you know, whatever. Um, then these objects now essentially like representing their own assemblies or their own parts could be selected independently. So I could select either the power painter. You can see the outline is this yellow outline kind of telling me that that's what I'm selecting. Or I can click on the cylinder or the cone. Right, so it's just your like top level component select. And notice that if you mouse over these little selections you get a different you get a little icon about what it what it looks like. 
So all in all, that's that's really the the quick and easy, the simple explanation for all four of these little buttons and how they're used for and, and some common mistakes. I really feel like this moving appearance one is a very frustrating mistake that's made and it's very common. But uh, all of these have come in handy over the over the past. So over the last, you know, like six weeks when I've been helping customers, I feel like I've used each one of these and, and for very specific reasons. But but knowing what they are and knowing that they're available was half the battle, right? So, hey, my name is Adam Hughes with Go Engineer. I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video and to, to learn a little, little bit about Visualize. If you liked it, feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to Go Engineer. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. Have a good day.